All right, let's get it going. Here we go. Good morning, YouTube family. We are live here in the studio. Say hello to the Facebook family. That's right, we're watching live here, the London Marathon, it's going down, and basically everybody watching, this will be the first clip in uh, tomorrow's vlog. So this is how we do it here in the studio. All right, back to business. See you on the flip side. It is officially 12 hours later since that last clip. I'm now eating an early dinner, because you better believe I'm going to bed as early as possible tonight. So we're going to get out in the studio, uh, talk about injuries, talk about how I really strive to thrive in injury situations. So anyway, but right now I'm eating dinner and oh, it is so good. If I look a little tired, sound a little stuffed up, it's just because <clears throat> the London Marathon took it out of me this morning, but that was so fun. Oh my goodness. If you haven't seen my breakdown of the London Marathon results, go check it out. Upper right hand corner. Ah, oh, it was so exciting. I, well, I, you probably already know who won, but I, I won't tell you right now. Um, I'm just one sec. Oh yeah, here we go. Back in the studio. Good to be back. It's still a little, uh, not quite back to normal from this morning's live stream. Got to move the computer back inside, but it was a good time here. What a day it has been. I did manage to squeeze in a 90 minute uh, bike ride on the stationary bike at the gym. So I feel good about that. Trying to thrive through this injury, right? That is the topic for today's vlog. We're going to break that down in a minute. Uh, but yesterday I actually walked everybody through all every single injury I've had in the last 20 years. So you see them on your screen right now. It, it's been quite a, it's been a lot. It looks like a lot, but it's actually a lot of repeat injuries. And uh, yeah, we talked about patterns and in injuries yesterday. So anyway, that was good to break that down for all of you, just so you can kind of see what I've had to deal with. Uh, basically, if I did, if a rough number is 20 injuries in 20 years for me. And when I go by injury, I mean something that takes me out of running so that I, it's just too painful to run. Like a little pain or ache, I don't quite count, but it, yeah, if it just takes me out from running, that is a running injury for me. And now I want to break down five steps for thriving. That's right, not just surviving, but thriving through a running injury. And this will be different. How you approach this, it depends on where you are at in life, where you are at in a training cycle, where you are at in, uh, you know, maybe you're maybe you're just training for your first 5K. This might not quite apply apply to you. Maybe you're training for a two mile state championship. This might apply to you. Like there's just different levels of competition out there. But I would argue, even if you're at, let's say a beginner level and you get injured, you can still take bits and pieces of what I'm about to share and apply them to your mindset, to your demeanor, to your inner will as you're pushing through your particular injury. And I'm sure, I'm sure that these ideas uh, are not gonna be a shocker to you. If you just pause and think, I bet a lot of you, when you're injured, you already do this. You just don't even know it or you've never put a name to it. And also, one last point, I bet these have already been written down in a book somewhere. I've never read that book, but these are just points that I have come up with over the years for how I deal with uh, a running injury and how I try as best I can, and I'm not saying I'm perfect, but as best I can to thrive when I can't go out and pound the pavement. One week ago from today, when you're watching this, I was doing my last workout, the threshold run in Wash Park. That run wrapped up and my foot was feeling a little funny. And that's when I knew, huh. So I try, I, I just was, you know, massaging, stretching in the car, and I said, okay, I'll just try and jog a little cool down. And nope, I came right back to the car and I knew something was not right. So what did I do? I sat in the car for about 10 minutes and I just kind of poked just a little bit around my foot. Not hard, just poked a little bit to try and pinpoint what is going on in my mind. And then basic, okay, so I, then I went on a mini family vacation. And during that family vacation, I was trying as best I could to be present to the family. But I'll tell you this, step number one, and I know this is kind of a dra uh, dramatic term, but I was mourning. <laughs> I was in a little bit of mourning, like, okay. And basically, so here's my rule of thumb. I give myself 
I like to keep it under, I know it's crazy, but like under 18 hours, so a day and a half, and sometimes even under 12 hours of quote unquote, I know it's dramatic, but morning where I have to really go into a, a kind of a difficult place and say, I might not be able to tow the line in Cleveland. I might not be able to run my peak race. All of this training, all of these vertical feet, all of these threshold runs, might not be able to now there it's long-term aerobic development like it's good for the big bank long term but short term i might not be able to withdraw that aerobic deposit from the bank so anyway that's step one morning i give myself and i force myself to really uh think and it's okay to be sad it's okay to and again i know that's a straw i, I, I gotta think of a better one no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm sticking with it. Morning. It's like, I, cause that's what it is for me. Like I love the sport so much and I'm sure many of you do as well. I know you do actually based on your comments down in the, down in the comments section. So anyway, that is step one morning. Okay. Step two. This is, this is a fun one. This is better than step one. I immediately after step one is over. So after I've grieved a little bit and, and just processed, that's a good word, processed the situation and be like, ugh that really stinks. And maybe I use some stronger language in the moment, but like, okay, this is the reality I have to deal with. So step two, I immediately after, I feel like I've processed and put it behind me and I try to keep it pretty quick. I must say now some, you know, it might take a little longer for you, that's okay. But then I go into injecting hope immediately into the situation. So, um, I'll just say real quick, a book arrived yesterday in the mail, a book uh, written by Ryan Hall. Thank you to Joey. Shout out to Joey. So that book by Ryan Hall, I bet it is going to have some pretty good nug gold nuggets of hope for dealing with running injuries. I know because Ryan d dealt with a lot of running injuries in his career. Uh, but here's how I found hope. As I was studying, so just last week, as I was studying up for the London Marathon, I was looking at the starting list and guess what? I was beginning to dig into the biographies of some of these guys and ladies towing the line at the London Marathon and there were a lot of, there were quite a few runners in that 25 to 28 age range and then everybody there was even more runners in the 34 I'll just I think the highest I saw was 38 maybe 37 38 it was like that 34 to 38 age range and it gave me so much hope because I'm 33 my, my time is not done. This is not the end. And I didn't know, like I was seeking out this hope. Where am I going to find hope during this uh, kind of mourning process with this running injury? And sure enough, I was like, okay, these guys are kind of old. They're getting older. This is awesome. I can still do this. If they can run at a high level, I know I can run at a high level. So anyway, that is step number two, inject hope into the situation. And step three, it's also a good step. I allow myself to begin to dream again. You better believe it, just last week, and listen, again, this is probably written down in a book, but I'm literally communicating this to you because it just happened, and it's a reminder to what happened to me, oh, 10 times during college at the University of Colorado, like, so many times I had to go through these five steps of dealing with running injuries. So step three, I allow myself to dream again. So what did I start doing? I started dreaming of other marathon races. Now, I'm not giving up on Cleveland. You better believe it, I'm not giving up. But I allowed myself to know that there's more than Cleveland. You know, there's more out there. And whether it's something in July, who knows? Like that's kind of quick, but you never know. Uh, if I heal up and it's, it's doing well, uh, I keep a shorter training block. So yeah, nice and short, like four or five weeks based off of this fitness. And then boom, let's hit the starting line and get after it in July, or maybe something in September, or who knows, maybe something in the fall. So I allow myself to dry. I personally last, last week, and for you, it might be allowing yourself to dream again for the next, you know, I hate to say it, but maybe the next cross country season, if you're at the end of your track season and you have to throw in the towel, that's okay. But start dreaming about the next uh, cross country season. That's all I'm saying is like, and I know this is not earth shattering, but, and I know this step is not earth shattering, but I think it's just a good reminder that it's good to have goals. Like that's another way to phrase it. If you don't like the, the term dreams, goals, like allow yourself to set goals again uh, after you have put hope back into the situation. And step number four, okay. So you've kind of been uh, dreaming up in the clouds. You've been floating around in, with hope. It's time to come back to reality and use, all right, use that hope. Don't forget it. You gotta use that hope, use those dreams as fuel 
for the upcoming suffering because you know that cross training is going to hurt. It's going to be tired. It's going to be tiring. It's going to be a little boring. And yes, it's probably going to be lonely. Why? Because you're in a gym or you're out, you're doing something out of your, you might not be with your team. If you're on a team and you're training, like you might be in the pool swimming for an hour, like that can get a little tedious at times. So you can't forget that you got to come back. So step four, come back to reality and build off of step two and step three so that you're ready for that suffering. There's just no other way around it. You are going to suffer through the cross training. I know that I am already, but I do believe because of step five that I'm actually thriving. And now the fifth and final step for thriving through a running injury. Oh gosh, here we go. Are you ready for this? Basically, it's the power of the mind, the power of the will, making the choice to say to yourself, I am going to do this cross training, but here's my kind of radical trick. And I know, and this is, okay, this depends on how, how bad you want it. This depends on what type of race you're getting ready for. This depends on maybe, uh, maybe your competitive nature and maybe you're not as competitive and that's fine. But for me, for what I do, I basically, and it depends on where you are at in your training block. All right, there's a lot of factors here. I basically challenge myself and say to my, and I did this in college and I, I came back. I, I forgot about this. I came back in college after a stress fracture and I won a race. I kind of forgot about that. I won a cross country race kind of going away at the Air Force Academy. It was the JV race and it was the JV cross country race. I'll have to look up those results somewhere. And, but it was cause I did, I was determined to what? To come back more fit or just as fit as I was when I got injured. How radical is that? So basically, you're at your top of your fitness, you are feeling good, you're feeling ready to rip a fast race, boom, injury, you have to make the choice. And that's what I've done. That's what I've done for Cleveland. And I don't know what the, I don't know what the outcome is going to be. But what I've done is I've said to myself with my mind, I will, if I can race Cleveland, I will be just as fit or more fit than the moment I got injured last Monday. And I know that's radical. I know that's a little crazy and it depends. It all depends on your life situation, but that's how I approach it. Why? Because it gives me a challenge. And that is that my YouTube family, my friends, my, my, I almost said my loved ones. You are my loved ones. That my friends and my YouTube family is uh, what we runners uh, live for and 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 fight for we want a good good challenge a great challenge And that is what I've put before myself right now That's what I did back in college and maybe depending on your situation that might be what you need for your situation right now Keyword thrive keyword thrive those are my five steps if you need to go back and rewatch this i get it i knew i know i just threw a lot at you and i'm just gonna throw it out there question of the day what would you add or if you want to take away but what would you add to thriving especially mentally through a running injury all right and we've dabbled in this topic i know i know we're kind of hitting this a lot this injury well it's because it's what i'm dealing with right now but i know a lot of you are injured so shed some light what would be what what step would you add for dealing and more importantly thriving through a running injury i love you guys that's amazing ah what a great day i gotta go to bed i gotta go back i gotta go to bed i gotta go to bed seek beauty work hard love each other we got this <laughs>